Ms. Miller? Here. No, sorry. Mrs. Bettinghouse, here. Ms. Here. Let the record show that six members are present, one member is absent. Uh, members of council, what is your pleasure on approving the written minutes of the July 23rd council meeting and the July 30th special council meeting? Mr. President. Ms. Bettinghouse. Make a motion to approve the written minutes of the July 23rd council meeting and July 30th special council meeting. Second, Mr. President. A motion by Ms. Bettinghouse, second by Mr. Tverky to approve the written minutes of the July 23rd council meeting and the July 30th special council meeting. Are there any remarks? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Um, next thing on the agenda then is to discuss or place on the table the uh, quarterly codified ordinances, co ordinances update that uh, Ms. Heidi Culverson has put in our uh, mailboxes. Does anyone have any questions or motion to place that on the table? Mr. President. Huh? Mr. President. Mr. Tverky. Make a motion to place ordinance 15 2020 on the table. I'll second that. A motion by Mr. Tverky, second by Ms. Bettinghouse to place ordinance 15, which is the quarterly codified ordinances update on the table. Are there any remarks? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. This time we'll Mr. move Mr. President. Mr. Tverky. While we're at it, might as well put, make motion for resolution 8 on the table to uh, <clears throat> appeal of resolution six and withdrawal of submission of the question of the seven mill tax levy since the levy passed the last the special election. Do I have a second on that? I'll second that. Uh, motion by Mr. DeBerke, second by Ms. Housefeld to place resolution number eight, 2020 on the table. Are there any remarks? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Um, this time we'll move to reports of administrative officials. Um, Mayor, Mr. Stooge. Thank you, Mr. President. I don't know if you'd prefer to wait a few minutes to see if the other two potential members of the tax review board show up to swear them in. I can do that at the end. Or if you think we could just go ahead and I could uh, introduce Mr. Weber and go ahead and, and make arrangements to swear in the other two privately. But I mean, I, I hate to have Mr. Weber have to sit through <laughs> Listen, I don't sorry, disagree. It's, it's so why don't I just go ahead and we'll do yep. we'll and if the other two that. show up, we'll swear them in later. How do we do this distance? You, just, you just stand right there. <laughs> okay. Is this, all right. First, I'd like to introduce Scott Weber. Uh, of course, he will be one of the new members of the Tax Review Board. Uh, Joe Kempe is being reappointed for another term. And Mr. Daniel Lee also will be joining. And I'll make arrangements to swear them in privately. Please raise your right hand. I state your name. I, Scott Weber. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. The ordinances of the, the ordinances of the Village of St. Bernard. The ordinances of the Village of St. Bernard. That I will faithfully and honestly. That I will faithfully and honestly. Discharge my duties. Discharge my duties. As a member of the Village of St. Bernard. As a member of the Village of St. Bernard Tax Review Board, Tax Review Board, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, and understanding, and understanding. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm sure, you have more. Quite a bit. <laughs> I'd I'd like to announce that we have had some personnel changes in City Hall. Uh, recently, the tax turned in, tax clerk turned in his resignation so that it was decided that because the deputy auditor was so efficient that we would consolidate the positions. Jake Johnson will be given a new title and we'll be, we will be reviewing his compensation for his new level of responsibility as he'll be performing the duties of both positions. There will be additional personnel changes that will be coming as we move forward to be more efficient and look to the future needs of the village. Some of this may be repetitive as Mr. Paul will be explaining how the village will be dealing with a large number of property maintenance issues. I held a department head meeting last week to discuss some of these issues regarding high grass, noxious weeds, junk cars, parking in yards, and other various code violations so that we could come up with a plan on how to aggressively deal with these issues. I'm confident that we will get to the, this under control 
And Mr. Paul will explain the simple way that you can report a problem property. Speaking of properties that need improvements and that have received complaints, the CIC is not exempt to those. I'd like to give you an update on the shopping center. The CIC has been working with a developer for more than two years to try to bring a particular business to the community that was interested in the Save-A-Lot and Chinese buffet space and due, for, and due to unforeseeable circumstances, that deal fell through. As our board reevaluated the situation and the current condition of the shopping center, we asked for a proposal that shared in our vision for mixed use that would include potential restaurants, retail, office, and residential space. The developer that we had working with specializes more in strip malls. So we are seeking new proposals for that site that might allow for new development that would complement a walking community and a possible entertainment district. This would require that the current structure be demolished. But in the meantime, in the meantime, we would entertain current pro new proposals, but we know that we need to make improvements to that structure. We are having the parking lot repaired, seal coated and striped, and the Oriental Buffet sign will be removed. The shredded de decorative facade on the front of Save a Lot space will be removed with appropriate paintwork to follow. Improvement to the landscaping will be done as well, but we're addressing the, reeds, the weeds currently, which have pretty much taken over the entire area, and I will have that completed this weekend. While on the topic of improvements, this is a vital area that we are entertaining proposals from developers. I would also like to revisit the transfer of the old firehouse and Long John Silver's property to the CIC so that it could be included in one RFP and have that current structure immediately demolished. The CIC has currently paid to have the entire site surveyed, but we are currently working with ODOT to deal with some of the boundary issues as they still show us having parcels that are in the middle of I-75. It was our original intent to wait until the parcels could be consolidated, but we feel that there is an immediate need to have that site prepared as it, a as it is a huge eyesore in the village, which will make the entire area more attractive for potential suitors. As discussed before, the CIC would like to have this property transferred without a financial commitment to the village as we are no longer funded. We will assume all responsibility for site preparation, maintenance, and property taxes. Does anyone want to make a motion to move that, place an ordinance on the table to move that property to the CIC or discuss it at least? Mr. President. Mr. DeBerke. The past, I don't know how many properties, I still think we should be getting some, some money back. You know, last time I talked to Bob, CIC had, a, had close to half a million dollars in their, their treasury. You know, we're charging our residents for tr picking up trash. Um, I would like to see something put in the, I know last time we did a Tower Avenue project, uh, it was all of a sudden discovered that there had to be a contract signed to uh, get money back from the CIC, even though it wasn't an ordinance that we were supposed to get money back. I would like to see a contract or in the ordinance stating take whatever the uh, CIC sells it for, keep track of what all they they pay for the demolition and all that kind of stuff, all that comes off the top, then we get like 20%, 20, 25% of what's left over. Any other comments? Mr. President. Mr. Bob Culberson. Um, I kind of echo what Jonathan was saying with the uh, Long John Silver property in there. I think, you know, we, we need to, you know, consider turning that piece of property over because it, you know, is becoming a, a eyesore to the village um, and, and just leveling it and if CIC is willing to burden that cost and, and do the site preparations to hopefully bring in a uh, tenant or, or a, a new development, I, that would be something I would, you know, definitely favor and just, you know, letting them uh, take care of that project and, you know, you know, handing that property over to them. Mr. President. So, as Mr. Tuberki had noted, that yes, our current treasury, uh, we are in a, in, a, in a pretty decent position. Um, one of the things that I committed to do when I agreed to be president was to, of course, not ask for funds from the village as far as to be actually have a line item funding future purchases. But we have actually worked diligently to sell off 
properties that actually don't fit into any development plan uh, that didn't seem to actually work within any future options. So at this point, the, what we've retained would be earmarked for future development and a, a major focus for our group. But we actually, again, have done this and been able to work towards the idea that, so that we can actually fund improvements. So what we have in the bank is going to be utilized for our future development plans of the shopping center, potential additional property acquisition, uh, so that we can actually put together the best possible option for that area. Uh, but going into this, again, we are now in a position where we can move forward. We've been waiting for that for years, and we've not asked again to be funded. But I understand that, uh, again, the, what's been done in the past, I can't take that back. You know, our group is, has the most qualified individuals that we've had in, in that organization for years, the talent that's there, and I, I believe that we are working to earn the trust back from the citizens and the administration so that again, we can have buy-in and that we can move forward. So I, I really would like to see this be uh, a transfer that would be free and clear as we have already made a financial commitment in working towards the consolidation of the parcels with the surveying and whatnot. And we are in a position to immediately act if we, has, we have already received uh, estimates for the demolition. Mr. President. Ms. Hasselt. Do we know how much longer it's going to be for ODOT to turn that property back over to us? Mr. President, it is already our, the village's property. But the issue is, is that so when we moved, started moving forward with that, we immediately had uh, retained uh, a surveyor. So we know where at least the surveyor feels the boundaries are. The problem is, is that trying to clean up the issues with the parcels as it shows the boundaries being in different areas. We wanted to, to wait. To, for this proposal to move forward until all of that could be done so that the consolidation could happen free and clear without any potential issues. So that way we're not creating any problems for an individual that might want to take on that development site. We don't want this to be something that would be left out there hanging. So we assumed that responsibility on the front end. Uh, but it is the village's property. The, the next step, if in the actual consolidation process, after we get the, the, the parcels dealt with, would be the vacate of the public right-of-way that runs from Clay Street to Vine. Once that's done then, which we'll be coming forward to council for that, just like we did for uh, the vacate of the service lane behind, on Andrew Street or behind the shopping center, but with that vacate being done, then we could actually move forward with the consolidation, which makes that entire site much more attractive having the parcels consolidated. But it, is, it does belong to the village now. Mr. Bob Culberson. Just to be clear, Jonathan, you're saying that you can take down the building without having to wait for the consolidation the property, correct? Mr. President? Mr. Stuchel. Yes, Mr. Culberson. The, the intent would be, again, as we propose to wait, but now because it is such an eyesore, and I, I, again, we could do the, the demolition now, that would not affect the future consolidation of the parcels, but it certainly would uh, immediately affect the, uh, the area itself as far as aesthetically. Ms. Bettingham. So I agree that that's an eye for um, I look at this as the CIC and the village were in this together. We think the CIC has done a great job of um, doing their part in what they said they were going to do. And to me, if we get any of that back, and then we might have to Mr. President, Mr. I appreciate that, Mrs. Bettinghouse. And one of the, the commitments that we'll be making, and hopefully the, the financial benefit to the village down the road will be, of course, a development that everyone can be proud of that will hopefully be income producing. Anyone else? Mr. Bob Culbertson. A motion by Mr. Bob Culbertson, second by Ms. Bettinghouse, to prepare an ordinance to transfer the Long John Silver and Old Firehouse property to the CIC. Any other remarks? 
If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So ordered. Mr. President? Mr. Tiberti. Question for Valerie. If, if the <clears throat> there's parcels in the firehouse area that's debatable or has to be cleared up, can we transfer that to the CIC right now? Or just do the Long John Silver property? I would have to take a look and see what the issues are. I mean, they're probably going to want... I, we can cert, there's a couple of different kinds of deeds you could give somebody. I mean, I guess that's what we're talking about here. Um, they would probably want a general warranty deed. I can't do that until we, I can't, okay. I need to look at things first. I can't say that we can do that. Um, there is another kind of deed that we have, which is a quit claim deed, which is less protective and they might not want that. So what's something we'll have to look at first. Mr. President. Mr. Um, one thing that I can assure you that, so our, our secretary is actually a real estate attorney and she could hopefully work with you quickly. It's not something I'd really prefer to wait on. So if we could do that in the next day or so, I'll put you in contact with Meredith and she could explain the, and actually maybe uh, make everyone more comfortable. But um, she did not feel that there would be any issue with the transfer of the property the parcels exist it's just the boundaries it doesn't that's all it is the survey has been done and we are currently working with odot uh, on that there isn't anything that actually it's just the way it shows up and how they have everything still recorded with the auditor's office but we we pretty much are very comfortable with where everything stands it there's the issue would come for future development right now we're just still talking about the demolition but we will have everything cleared up before anything is actually constructed or approved. But if Valerie can speak with Meredith and clear that up, I, I feel very comfortable. Any other remarks? If not, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. No, we already did that, that, my bad. <laughs> I've already got it marked. I was writing it on the back. All right, you are, that's all of your report? Thank you. Is there a report from the auditor? Oh, Mr. <laughs> yeah, I got one. <laughs> there before the, I, I the, looked up the, the auditor, the auditor's office provided the end of <coughs> July 2020 revenue, expense, and cash fund spreadsheet to council and the administration. At the end of July, the revenues are up $485,052.97, and the expenses are down. $463,028.43 compared to last year. Thanks to, the residents that, thanks to the residents that approved the tax levy renewal. This will help the village continue all the great services it provides. The Otter's Office prepared Resolution 8, 2020. This resolution is required to be passed by the Board of Elections in order to remove the levy from the November ballot. The Board of Elections wants the resolution passed this month. So I am asking it to be placed on the table, which you already did. Thank you. I would like to also request an appropriation ordinance be placed on the table for transferring funds from the general fund to the following cash account. 04 1000 swimming pool in the amount of 100,000. 05 1000 master plan, 200,000. 18 1000 storm sewers, $6,152 and 31 1,000 general bond, 200,000. The village received $134,458.12 from Hamilton County for the funds from the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act. The department heads will be meeting in the next few weeks to discuss the best ways to use these funds. Thank you, Mr. President. That concludes my report. Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Tabarki. The money for the pool, is that additional appropriation? No, it's just putting it in the cash fund. Okay. We're, they're all transfers. All right. Would anyone like to make a motion to place the ordinance for the additional appropriations? Mr. President. Mr. DeBerke. Make a motion to put the ordinance tape for transfer of funds. I'll second that, Mr. President. A motion by Mr. DeBerke, seconded by Ms. Hasfeld, to uh, prepare an ordinance for transfer of funds or additional appropriations, correct? Let's put additional appropriation. It's just an appropriation okay. ordinance, okay. so it'll be transferred. Okay. Uh, are there any remarks? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Anything else, Ms. Bristol? Yes, 
That's it. Thank you. Uh, Law Director, Ms. Van Valkenburg. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Um, I've been working with the Chief of Police regarding responding to public document requests. I'm also working with him regarding a software uh, service provider, which will help with various reporting issues. Um, also, I continue working with the Laws, Contracts, and Claims Committee on an anti-discrimination ordinance, ordinance. Excuse me. We will be meeting again, I believe, this coming Tuesday, the 18th at 7 o'clock. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Treasurer, Mr. Ungru. Thank you, Mr. President. This evening I have the statement for Star Ohio Bank that I forgot last meeting. So at the end of June, our total there with the state was $3,813,287.82. And on the back of that report, I also pulled in July at this point since the month was over. So our total at the end of July at Star Ohio was 3814000 $764.79. And I've provided copies to the council members. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, Safety and Service Director, Mr. Paul. Thank you, Mr. President. We had a department head meeting and decided to be less tolerant of issues in our village. High grass, weeds, and trash are some of these issues. People are becoming complacent about our warnings. Therefore, after our due process, we will cut, clean, and remove waste from the property that is not in compliance, and the bill will be placed as a lien on your property. Be fair warned, it is less expensive to hire a lawn, lawn service than to pay our fine. We also decided to incorporate a complaint line. This phone line will be used for anonymous property complaints that will be recorded, placed on a list, then dealt with accordingly. You will not get to talk to a person. The phone number is 513-482-5688. My estimate on the trash fee may be underestimated as I figured that it would start to diminish. It did, but the last two weeks of July once again saw a spike of $11,641.55. I will keep an eye on this line item and keep you posted. That concludes my report. Thank you. Mr. President. Mr. DeBerke. Tommy, can you do a call command for that word or that phone number? Mr. President? Mr. Paul. Yes, it'll be, uh, this tonight's the first announcement. It'll be in the newsletter and then on call command. Does that include putting trash out on the wrong day? <laughs> yeah, it, if, if they consistently do it, yes, it is. All right, thank you. Tax Commissioner slash Administrator, Ms. Holmes. Thank you, Mr. President. The tax collections for July 2020 were $907,869. Tax refunds for July were $16,284.95. The village is up 41% in tax revenue from July of 2019. Uh, this is really just due because of the filing date being moved. That's why it's like that. So the year-to-date tax collection is actually at 13.64%, so it's up. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Keep up the good news. Uh, we'll move to reports of standing committees. Finance, Mr. Tuberkey. No report. Thank you. Any report from the safety committee, Mr. Ray Culberson? No. Mr. Bob Culberson? He said no report. No report. Thank you. Service, Mr. Schultmeyer. Uh, the service department report for July 2020. Trucks placed in residences were 29. 36 dumpsters were placed at residences. 574 special pickups at residences, 193 tons of garbage taken to the landfill. As far as recycling, we had 38.49 tons of recycling material and 8,620 pounds of scrap metal. That concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you. Public improvements, Mr. Bob Culberson. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the next CIC meeting is Tuesday night, this Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Um, I encourage everybody to go out and check the uh, website for the available properties uh, to be built. I believe there's one actually on Bank, and then we actually have a uh, property value available on Andrew Street. Uh, that concludes my report. Thank you. Laws, Contracts, and Claims from Spending House. Thank you, Mr. President. As Valerie said, um, there will be a meeting with the Laws, Contracts, and Claims Committee to discuss further the anti-discrimination um, ordinance, and that will be how all right.
Thank you. Marketing, Ms. Miller. Thank you, Mr. President. The Aquatic Center will remain open for weekends starting August the 15th until Monday, September 7th. Arts and crafts are officially over and will be back next summer. Some of our local schools are starting back this week. I would like to remind citizens to be mindful while driving through our village. We want to make sure that our students remain safe, so please be mindful in our school zones. We still do not have any new information regarding Say Soccer or the dance program. As information comes in, we will share the updates. This concludes my report. Thank you. Business and industry, Ms. Housefield. No report, Mr. President. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience? Oh, he left. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, what is council's pleasure on the excuse of the absent member? Ms. Bettinghouse. A motion by Ms. Bettinghouse, second by Mr. Schultmeyer to excuse the absent member. Are there any remarks? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. So I show one resolution and three ordinances then for the next council meeting. The next council meeting will be August 27th. This time I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. President. Mr. Bob Culberson. A motion by Mr. Bob Culberson, second by Ms. Benninghouse to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed?